Hi guys, welcome back to After Hours Set Prep. Today I want to talk about choosing the right knife for the outdoors. Now, a knife is like a car or shoes or really anything in life. You don't have one specific item that fits all needs or every person so you'll have to go around do your homework and see what you like but maybe we can work on some guidelines today now when you go to the outdoors sorry it's one of the dogs yeah um, when you go to the outdoors what are you doing are you just going camping as a bushcraft knife and if you in need and you need you, you are outdoors and you need to make your way home for life or death that's when you will need a survival knife now I've got this two that I can show today Let's start with the camp knife or the bushcraft knife. Small little blade, nothing too long or big. Um, in all essence, you don't want something that's too big, otherwise, it'll be in the way, it'll be more cumbersome. You don't want something like a machete or something. Yes, it's good for chopping, but then that's why you have an axe and can you really do any form of cutting with a machete to a point yes but not total so you need a nice blade preferably straight edge blade straighted knives they do have their purposes when you have something tougher like um, nylon rope um, thicker rope that type of thing something more sturdy to cut but not for this purpose you can't do whittling you can't do feather sticks and also if you're in the middle of nowhere a serrated knife is a burger to sharpen if you've got a flat stone water stone sharpening stone your straight edge and blade will be perfect. Now this one I've been given a couple of years back. It's um, I swapped it out with my stepdad for another knife. And it's got a bottle opener, an awl, a little file and screwdriver, a flat edge screwdriver naturally. Um, and a little saw. I've got others so I don't really need it but the main thing you're looking at is what type of steel does it have how thick is the spine of the knife and what type of yeah what type of steel do you want carbon steel do you want stainless steel once again personal preference some people prefer carbon steel some people prefer stainless steel they've all got their pros and cons now with this one it's like I said small light you can do all your camp stuff with it but you can't do batoning or anything what's nice about this one as you can see the steel of the blade goes all the way through and that's useful for uh, harder stuff you're not gonna have your knife break out on you uh, there used to be the years back it's called well I called it the Rambo knife um, it's got a bigger blade it's got 
flat edge, um, straight edge cutting side, but at the top it's got these, I don't know, it's supposed to be serrations, I don't know, it's, it's not even sharp there, the dog's making a noise, but the problem I have with it mainly, the handle grip, is that round tubular grip with the knob that unscrews, it's got its own compass, it's got fishing gear in the handle, but where does the blade end? It just comes past the blade guard and then it's got a little bolt and screw keeping it in place. Now if you had to do batoning with that, it's going to break. So if you've got that for your outdoors knife, toss it. Get something else. Um, I saw in South Africa out, um, outdoor shops, I'm not going to name names or anything, um, you get the Mora knife that is for the purpose of bushcraft knives. It's praised all over the world, but it's basically almost like this one. And it's sturdy, the blade doesn't flex. So this is something you want for your survival knife. Ah, uh, sorry, <laughs> your bushcraft knife. Now when it comes to something more sturdy, if you want to, if you've had an issue that you had to depart from home, add your, to you grab your go bag, day bag, whatever you've, you've got, and you flee to the woods. But now you have to survive out there in order to make uh, make your way home this is what I use for a survival knife the blade is longer also very sturdy as you can see with the spine the blade metal is thicker it's got a bit of a drop point there as you can see I've used this multiple times the lines that go across it's not rust you've got some rust somewhere else like here but also here I've used this for betoning hardwood and I didn't like when you see other survival videos use a metal uh, Sorry guys, a uh, piece of wood to put on down on, uh, just use the, I've actually used an axe to put on down on this and I've put this thing to hell and back. I've used this for many years as a throwing knife just into a tree that's been chopped down um, yeah this is stainless steel also um, it's something that I had so I didn't specifically go out I think I got this from my, my dad years back and I'm, I'm talking about like give or take 25 years back and it's still going strong. The only downside to this knife, it's not full tang. From roughly about here, you have a rat tail tang. As you can see by the nut there, it comes out there, uh, screws fast. Normally, I'd be quite against a rat tail tang, but because of the history that I have with this knife, I can trust this knife. This is not one of those things that's um, poorly built, will break on you halfway through. I put this thing through, like I said, through hell and back. So, what you're looking for? Good steel. Uh, depends on what you want. Stainless steel carbon steel, do your own work, which is which. Like I said, both have their pros and cons. 
um, for your survival knife if you want a good pommel at the back so you can hammer down on items and just as a final thought this is the original sheath that came with this knife two reasons why I made another sheath you can see it's very crudely made it's one of the first leather work projects that I started with that's why it's so crudely made but I'm looking for the thing that's in my hand the belt loops tore out so I had to make something new another issue is if I had to strap this to this um, shoulder straps of my backpack This is on my, the shoulder strap of my backpack. Yeah, sure you can carry it like this. Most people, as well as myself, prefer this way around. Ah, silly me. What the, what happens is gravity takes charge. Then if you want to grab, you can cut yourself. So what I did with the new sheath. Okay, I turned it around because as you can see the blade tends to go the other way but with this one because the strap is here it doesn't come out yes of course if you have it on your belt the negative to that is it rides up high in your ribs and then if you fall it can um, break a rib fracture whatever but the way I've designed this is um, you can put a, another strap through here around the back of your belt at the back here unclip and take it out here it's got multiple designs um, functions carry options whatever you want to call it but the main thing is it won't slip out But yeah, main thing is also do not go for something that looks flashy. Go something with go with something that's proven. You don't want a flimsy blade. You don't want, for example, a filleting knife. A filleting knife is designed to flex. Your outdoor knives, you do not want to flex. You want a decent uh, steel. doesn't have to have all the little extras like the Mora knife the Mora knife is not a full uh, tang it's about a three-quarter tang which means the metal of the blade only protrudes to where my finger is give or take but the Mora knife has been proven outdoors as a bushcraft knife once again not sponsored or anything I don't do sponsors but I'm only here to share my knowledge that I've learned over time. I hope you guys enjoy this. If there's anything you want clarity on, let me know. Um, always welcome to add your 10 cents worth in the comments. Keep it clean, please. Um, yeah, but hopefully this will be a guide to any of you who haven't thought about getting an outdoor knife yet. As always, enjoy, stay safe. Remember to like, subscribe and share. Until next time, enjoy guys.